celebrate our 100th anniversary. During the luncheon, we'll review some of the ways we were able to celebrate the significant milestones. Hard, Hard to believe that Mar has been around for 100 years. Pretty amazing, isn't it? As we move into our 101st year, I don't think anything is going to be slowing us down and be more of a And if you're ready to take a vacation, who's ready to take a vacation? We're going to be giving away to one lucky person two round trip airfares that they can be used to fly anywhere in the continental US. I remember two years ago, Sherry Fowler won that. So I'm expecting, she was, you were the incoming president and she won. So I'm expecting as the outgoing president, I should get some airfare. So to do that, all you have to do is donate a minimum of $50 to the Realtor Fund this year. If you've already donated this year, you will automatically be entered into the drawing. But the more times you donate that $50, the more chances you're going to have to win the vacation. The folks at the Realtor Fund table in the hallway will be happy to take your $50 donation. If you've met anybody that's part of the Realtor Fund, they are phenomenal people and they are just the joy of the year round. So look for those Realtor Fund table piece ready to take your $50 donation. <laughs> You may also have noticed in the hallway the Guard Angel Tree. This annual program benefits the APS Title I Homeless Project. We found out that the normal rate for homeless families has grown exponentially due to the job losses during COVID. Not only, we're not only collecting for individual angels, but their families as well. There's still, there still time to adopt an angel or a family. And or if you don't have time stores, you can make a monetary, you can make a monetary donation to be used for gift cards. Before we get started with our meeting, I'd like to invite Hubert Hill to join me on stage. Hubert is a bar member, New Mexico Association of Realtors President elect, and was the 2019 Southwest Mills President, and also my good friend. Hubert and I wanted to share with you a few moments and say a special goodbye to our friend, former bar president and the 2021 New Mexico Association of Realtors President, Daniel.
outside of our professions and, and association and in our profession. And his family carried us off. He uh, started the Maddox uh, Company of Realtors in 1975 and he's still really strong. And he instilled really good and professional values within his family. His work is forever walk for life of our ground. His son's name and her girl and daughter of this guy continue to take care of his legacy. So, CEO uh, in service to the membership of the Greater Albuquerque Association of Realtors. And um, not, a, not a position I take lightly, um, and, I, and I love my job, I just have to tell you that. Uh, if, if you noticed, uh, as you were coming in this morning, you can find your new passport. And for those of you that have not seen Good morning, before, I'm Kathy Colvin. new faces here this morning. This will be your guide through the rest of the year. We are... Uh, Consummate planners at Edgar, we like to plan our, our entire year. That gives us a lot of flexibility to deal with whatever comes up um, kind of in the natural course of doing business like, oh, say, pandemics or building collapses, uh, minor things that come along in your life to uh, disrupt uh, the natural flow. But we, uh, we are dealing with those things and we are having a we're making lemonade out of lemons, to, say, to put it mildly. Margaritas. Margaritas uh, to follow, absolutely. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pleased and, and honored to be here this morning with, with our esteemed uh, panel. And uh, Belinda Franco, who you met, the incoming president of GAR, uh, Bridget Gilbert, the incoming president of Southwest MLS, uh, Jeanette Raver, and our new MLS director, Almost a year now, Richard Gibbons. Just about. Let's give him a, another hand, folks. And, and, I, and I do have to say, if, if you like what Richard's done so far, you ain't seen nothing yet. Right? Right. Thank you. So our panel is basically, after quite a bit of discussion about what we're talking about this morning, is kind of where, where we've been, where are we now, and where are we headed? And so I need to be headed into my my notes on these questions. That would really help. That would be this one. I just, I just have a slow phone. My wife keeps telling me my phone's too slow. So let's, let's start on the... Uh, on the guard side. And we'll start with our uh, soon to be Feather Duster, immediate past president, uh, Melinda Franco. And uh, just tell us about um, tell us about your year. What are, what are some of the highlights that you had during the year? 
So who else has had the most incredible real estate year and also the worst real estate year? That's a common theme. It's been the worst of times, it's been the best of times. Um, real estate in, in New Mexico has been interesting to say the least. I think GAR has been really great in helping members kind of navigate the, the new COVID protocols and the, how everything has changed with masks and no masks and are we able to go in the house? Are we not able to go in the house? Are we able to, um, you know, attend open houses? Are we not? You know, so we've really have been trying to get the word out to everybody as things have been constantly changing. We've one of the the great things that we had decided to do this year was try different ways of engaging with with membership. We did an in the loop uh, after each board meeting. We would um, the Southwest MLS president Kathy Colvin and I would sit and and out of our comfort zones, talk to a camera and, and tell membership what, what is going on. And she also did a Southwest MLS spotlight. So just trying to find different ways. And uh, we have a fantastic communications department led by Laura Harris and Gabe Baca and Julian Nunez. Um, if you have a chance, please thank them for everything that they do. They get out the passport, they get out the blogs, they are just a great service to, to GAR and to um, of the leadership staff, um, just all, from leadership to staff, everybody, that they, they work really hard. So thank you for all that you do. I think something else that we did that was really great was we, under the leadership of Sherry Fowler, she put together a PAG, a presidential, a presidential advisory group, um, to redline and change the, the bylaws on the policies. They hadn't been looked at in years and years, and real estate's constantly changing, evolving. And so Jane Duran, she uh, led that PAG, um, and she chaired it, and we went through word for word. Uh, line by line, um, those bylaws and policies for, for you guys, the membership. Um, we have had some great uh, success with the YPN. We've had some great chairs. Uh, Anika Nunez uh, was a chair for 2021. Um, it was Josh Price last year. Uh, really just breathed new life into YPN. Um, just really proud of the, the GAP group, uh, which is led by Adrian this year, uh, also staff member. Fantastic, fantastic things going on at GARB. I just am really proud of everything that, that we've done. Real quick follow-up. Would you say that we have been able to stick to our objectives and stick to our strategic plan in spite of all that's gone on? I think that we've done an incredible job in spite of the pandemic and the challenges. Uh, we were talking earlier, you know, they're not challenges, they're, they're absolutely opportunities. Opportunities to succeed in our businesses, succeed in our families. Um, it just is an opportunity. We, I was part of the strategic plan in 2019, and it's a three year uh, strap plan. And it was really great to see that kind of come together. This coming year is going to be led by Bridget, and I'm excited to see uh, what she moves us forward in the next in the next three years. So I would say that we've done a phenomenal job between membership and staff. Um, I think that we've been able to, to pivot pretty well in spite of it all. Thank you, Belinda. Bridget, let's um, real quick talk about um, in 2022, what can our members expect from GAR under your leadership? Well, well uh, I, um, I know that we're all still, I, I think the biggest challenge for 2022 is still dealing with the unknown. What does 2022 hold in, in, the, in the rules and regulations you know, uh, regarding COVID? And how is that going to affect what we're going to do? Um, Belinda, uh, Belinda alluded to the fact that we would be doing a new strat plan. And so we'll be doing a strat plan. We usually do those over the over a three-year period. And I'd, and I'd like, like to, like to while, while I've got a room full of people here, here to, to just, just ask you, you there is going to be a survey going out in the first quarter. And what is really, really helpful in developing that strat plan is for you to tell us what are we doing right? What do we need more of? How can we better serve our association? So when you see that, that survey come out, if you would provide those answers and the input, we would all really love that. And it would really help us to make our plans over the next three years and, and make it beneficial and, and make it meaningful for you, our membership. Thank you. So you so all know, um, um, these, these folks, folks have spent, spent um, not, just not just this year, but, but many years before, before in preparation 
for these positions and month after month of going to meetings and meeting with their peers and with staff to provide, um, to take ideas and provide, provide direction for this organization. And uh, they've done a, they've done a super fantastic job. It's no easy feat. Uh, there's a lot of uh, out-of-town travel associated with it as well, time away from their business. But many times I hear leadership folks talk about, I just had my busiest year ever, and I'm president of the association. And that's, that's an amazing thing to be able to say, is that I've, I've taken all this time away from my business to serve, but the, the industry and, and our community keeps giving back. So that's kind of cool. It's absolutely cool, and, and I think that that's a big reason why I encourage people to get involved. I've had some amazing mentors over the years that have encouraged me to get involved, and I was always worried that it was going to take too much time, and it is a time commitment, but it's also worthwhile. It, it, it keeps you engaged in the business, in the industry, and that's so valuable. It is. Thank you, and thank you for your service. I would encourage all of you to, uh, to think about it at some point in your career as well. We've got, we've got people in the audience that have, have been around for a long time, uh, emeritus members that have come back into leadership. I can see a couple of them from, my, from where I'm standing here, Ian Caird, Mary Romero. Both emeritus members both came back to service in the organization. So you're never, it's never too early or too late to get involved. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something now. I'm going to introduce somebody that's not even here. Uh, Kathy Colvin, you're wondering maybe why the MLS president isn't up on stage. You're fixing to find out, and so if I could have the uh, have the team back there roll this tape. There we go. Good morning. I'm Kathy Colvin, your Southwest MLS president for 2021. I'm sorry I can't be with you today. I'm traveling on your behalf to an NAR training session in Nashville. For 2022, I was asked to chair NAR's Issues and Mobilization Grant Committee, whose budget is more than 15 million dollars. So it's a huge honor for New Mexico to be chairing one of the top committees at NER. Many people ask me, what does this committee do? Well, the Issues and Mobilization Committee is part of NER's campaign services that provides financial and technical assistance to state and local associations, such as GAR and NMAR, to help advocate the association's position on important real estate issues. Whether attempting to pass a ballot initiative or influence proposed regulations, communicating the realtor position to lawmakers and voters can significantly influence the outcome. The committee provides input with laws and proposed regulations that affect realtor interests and private property rights. One example is the real estate transfer tax that Enmar opposed earlier this year. If that had become legislation, it would have been detrimental to our business. And now I'd like to highlight a few of Southwest MLS accomplishments this year due to the hard work of our MLS director and staff, committee and volunteers, and board of directors. To begin with, we streamlined the data feed approval process, simplified the policy for members when requesting the listing changes by staff, and added the function to copy listings across different property types. We also negotiated a three-year extension with Flex to ensure continuity and cost savings for you. To raise the bar on professionalism, a fair housing policy was created. Penalties were implemented for unauthorized use of photos, and a policy was created requiring a minimum number of photos on a listing to ensure data accuracy for realtors and appraisers alike. In an industry first, Southwest MLS will be using artificial intelligence and computer vision to proactively monitor that photo minimums are met, leading the way for other MLSs to follow. To improve our data quality, we've updated our realist policy to provide more accurate statistics for days on market calculations, and tax levy disclosures will soon be required for all listings. Finally, we strengthened our commitment to clear cooperation and to ensure that both members and consumers get fair and equal access to listings. These are just a few highlights. In addition, your board made many procedural decisions involving the election, budgeting, dues, and many other changes to the MLS. 
You can catch up on those by reviewing Richard's video on upcoming changes. I'd also like to give a special shout out to Richard Gibbons, our MLS director, who joined us in February. He quickly caught up to speed and is helping us remain a cutting edge leader in the industry. We truly appreciate all the feedback you as members provided to our committees this year. I thank you and I look forward to seeing you next year. Happy holidays. Kathy, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Magic and technology. So uh, that, that just leads us right into Southwest MLS, our multiple listing service, uh, wholly owned subsidiary of GAR. And um, we've been a, 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 just a, a huge part of our community um, for many, many decades. And um, it's, it's no small job to take this task on, uh, to be president of Southwest MLS. Certainly uh, in, in and among uh, an industry that's undergoing such amazing changes uh, as we go forward. So Jeanette Raver, our, our incoming president, uh, I've got just a couple of quick questions okay. for you and Richard. I think we should give her a round of applause. <laughs> give her a hand for sure. It's a big job to say the least, and they've had some great accomplishments, but how do you see Southwest MLS stacking up against other MLSs uh, of our roughly the same size uh, in terms of the technology, our level of service, our contribution to the overall uh, direction of the industry, and our service to members? Well, I see a lot of changes that have happened since Richard came. Uh, he's He's known all over the United States with um, real estate. We just got back from two um, conferences, the CMLS and Inman, and everybody knew him. And he was on stage, and I think that's what's happening is we are getting noticed more, and our leadership has also stepped up to um, help us and help GAR and Southwest MLS to be a, a, a top arena. So Richard, I think Richard has helped us so much that way and he's going to continue helping us. Um, one of the things we are trying to do is um, choosing a, the change instead of following... Um, help me, Richard. <laughs> he gave it to me and I can't even read my writing. <laughs> We're working to cause change Thank instead you. of allowing change to happen to us. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So I see a lot of changing happening, and um, I think we're we're going to be we are already being seen national wise, and a lot of boards are going to be following us instead of us following them. I had a similar experience at NAR. I was at a table of people I didn't know from all around the country, and somebody said, "Hi, I'm so and so," and I said, "I'm Belinda from New Mexico," and they said, "Richard Gibbons." I said, no, Belinda Franco. He said, Richard Gibbons. <laughs> so New Mexico is Richard Gibbons, even though he's from Florida. While I appreciate it, we can get off the Richard Love Fest for a second. Um, I can't do anything I do without an Austin Board of Directors behind me. So I, I, I greatly appreciate the leadership I've had here. I, 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 I was telling Kent the other day, my first three presidents are Kathy Colvin, Jeanette Raver, and Tigo Venturi. I think that's a pretty good start for just about anybody in the industry. So. Um, so yeah, and, and, and Southwest MLS is doing a lot of cool stuff. The thing like the minimum photos that Kathy talked about, that's an industry first. And that was just a function of, you know, this is a pain point in the industry. How can we, uh, you know, most people, they just have the one minimum photo, right, outside front of the house. Well, and that's because it's a pain to try to do any kind of compliance on that. So I just reached out to a vendor, said, hey, can you do this? They said yes. <laughs> so we're working on that now, and we're developing it, and that'll be launched sometime in quarter one. And um, stuff like that, where we're addressing these major pain points that most people don't even want to look at, is, is a real testament to the leadership that you guys have on your board of directors. Very good. Thank you very much. We are happy, happy to have you here, Richard. Richard. Don't, don't, don't let it get to you. <laughs> so, Jeanette, okay, so okay, so this is where you're on the spot. What can we look forward to in a Jeanette River administration? Okay, okay. Some fun. Some fun. <laughs> we, um, we're going, we're going after, after GAR. They, they did all their bylaws and changes. And changes. So, so that's, that's what, what we're, we're going, going to be working, working on, on is our bylaws, bylaws and our policies. And our policies. Um, we, we have a lot of things that things are gray in them. In them. So, so we're going to get those changed. changed. Um, we have, we have 
they're, they're just, just they, they haven't, haven't been, been redone, redone in a long, long time. time. So, so we're, we're going to clean them up. up. Um, um, we're also going to look at all our rolls and clean those up. And we're going to also work on the values of the rental data for MLS. We don't have a very good program, basically, for the rental programs, and we have a lot of property managers. So we're going to be working on that to solve a lot of problems. And, and um, of course, we're working, working always, always to bring in new tools, tools to, to you guys, guys to, to be able to, able to use, use and find out exactly what you guys want. Um, we're always here, and Richard's fantastic if you have questions. So we're just working as a team and um, trying to give you some good stuff next year. Very good. Well, as you can see, there is a lot to look forward to. There's a lot to be proud of. Uh, we will um, ask our panel, give, give them one more round of applause, please. And I'm, I'm going to do the, the thing that they, hit, they, they dread the most, probably, and that's the, the uh, lightning round. <laughs> so real quick, one thought from each of you. Belinda? Get involved. Do something today that your future self is going to thank you for. Get involved with the association. Get involved with your community. Get involved with your families. Just re-engage. 2020, 2021 has been difficult. Um, make 2022 really great. Oh, Bridget. one last thing. I just want to let you guys all know that, that dues for GAR have not increased in 13 years. That deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Those were wheels that were set in motion a long time ago by a very capable Janice McCrary. And uh, so we owe a lot of that to her, but uh, our team has taken the reins from there and our boards have been very judicious with, uh, with how things are going and we're, uh, we're very strong. Bridget, one thought. What she said. Um, uh, seriously, though, um, coming in as your president, uh, I would love to get to know everybody. Um, I would love your input. And so just uh, become involved. Uh, let us know what you need and how we can help. Thank you very much. Jeanette? Well, I'm going to stay on the same kind of subject. Um, I think volunteer. We, I, I waited a long time to volunteer in the board. I've been 36 years. But I have really fulfilled a lot of stuff for my personal life just for volunteering. So I do a lot of volunteering also with charities, but I do a lot with GAR and Southwest MLS. And I think it's so important. Um, it's amazing what you learn being around all these smart people. So it's really, um, it's benefited me and my business. Yes, it takes some time up, but it's worth every single second. Very good, and Richard? <laughs> Also stressing the importance of, importance of volunteerism, we can't do anything that we do without the leadership. But just to go a little bit further, really take pride in being a Realtor. Um, one interesting statistic that came out recently in the NAR Buyers and Sellers Report, 87% of people that bought a home in 2021 used a Realtor. And that number has stayed consistent since 2011. Um, for the last decade, there's been a lot of changes in technology, there's been a lot of fear mongering, there's been a lot of, oh, this, we're gonna be replaced. That's changing. If you talk to venture capitalists now, if you talk to these technologists that are getting into it, they've realized the value of a Realtor and how, mad they, how bad they need it. So be proud of that. And, and, and you know, like with our minimum photos and things like this, we're trying to raise that floor on professionalism and help us do that. Make, put as much into your listings as you can, make sure it's accurate data, and let's, let's just keep rising this tide for everybody, consumers involved. Very good, thank you very much. Let's give them one more round of applause. and Sherry join me on stage, please. Sherry Fowler, Bridget Gilbert. Come on down. I hereby call this meeting to order.
Hi, I'm Sherry Fowler, past president. Um, as you heard earlier, we've had some significant losses from our realtor family this year. However, I would like us to observe a moment of silence to remember all of our realtor family and colleagues we've lost. And now let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we are here today to thank you for allowing us to prosper despite the challenges we have faced in the past two years. And while it was difficult, we have endured and prospered. We have been abundantly blessed, and we know that you are the author of everything good in our lives. We thank you for our talents, skills, and the individual purposes that you have placed in each of us. Thank you for allowing us to serve our community by helping our brothers and sisters realize one of the most basic needs, a place to call home. We pray that your love will continue to inspire and strengthen us in the realtor community. We ask that you continue to cover our city, our state, and our nation with your divine grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Please welcome Bridget Gilbert, your incoming president, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the pledge. And Sherry. Now I'd like to recognize Tim McEachin, our 2021 Central District Vice President, also known as RVP. And I'd like to ask Tim to please join me on the stage. You can still come up. Please come up. Tim, thank you for being here and, and sharing such valuable updates. It's scarier when you look at it all, you know. So I am Tim McEachin, and I'm, uh, I'm happy for you guys to have me here this morning. I'm happy to bring this update to you, and I will be brief. So I'm going to start off with the MR building. All good news on the MR building. It's 100% leased. Uh, we refinanced it this year, probably the end of the last half of this year. Um, we're able to put, uh, pay down an additional $500,000 on the principal balance of our loan. So now we only owe a million and a half dollars on a building that appraised for $3.6 million. So I've done a really good job of being financial stewards on the, on the building portion of our deal. Um, it's an asset we can all be proud of. I mean, when you're in Santa Fe, go by and take a look at it. Go by and visit, have a cup of coffee. Go by if you need a quiet place to make a phone call. Go by if you need to meet with someone and you need a place to do it. It's your building and it belongs to all of us and we need to use it. And when you get somebody in there, you will be proud and they will be impressed. So financially, we had our inter we had our audit, external audit, and we came out just fine. Uh, They're very excited and pleased with our financial standing, how we've done, and how we look financially. So all our budget items are in order. Uh, overall, we're now Gar uh, Gar. Sorry about that. Enmar, all these acronyms. Enmar is fully staffed. Fully staffed was a bit of a challenge because. We had the COVID thing and we didn't need a full staff and we had people retire and really we were working without two or three people missing. Things we learned when we went to go hire people is that we hadn't hired anybody in so long that uh, we weren't very competitive. And uh, actually NAR stepped in and ran analysis for us and were able to tell us what we needed to do to hire good people. And to hire good people obviously you have to be competitive with both pay and incentives and it was a big help and a big plus and we were able to hire what I think to be a great staff. So that's another big bonus. So I want to talk a little bit about involvement. I mean, I'm really proud not just of the number of people that are getting involved, but as I go to these meetings, and I'm embarrassed to say 42 years, but as when I go to these meetings, I'm really impressed with the young people coming out. And the young people coming out and getting involved, getting on boards, volunteering, spending their time, what they're going to find out, it's not a very good secret, but what they're going to find out is that your circle of influence grows exponentially. You're going to have people and know people that can help you not only be successful, but when you need a question answered, you're going to have a friend you can call and answer. So there's benefits to volunteering. I'm very impressed and very pleased at the amount of involvement we're getting from our young brokers and people coming into the business. So, hey. I'm getting close. This can be quick. So I'm going to talk a little bit about political involvement and the active participation of realtors. Um, better than I've seen in years. 
and we've got people, not just realtors individually getting involved, but realtors politi uh, joining political action committees, whether it's RECPAC or RPAC or HELP or SOS. They're getting involved. They're getting their voices heard. And there's a whole bunch of us. I and mean, you would not believe the impact 7,000 voters have on how the, uh, the results of how things turn out. So we should be active. And whether you're an R or whether you're a D, I don't care. Get involved. Be involved. And, 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 and follow your heart with as far as getting people elected. We've got quality people running for election. We have somebody show up that's willing to run for election, and it is a beating you take when you run for election. You don't support those people. You know, go out and, and walk in the for them, sign their petitions, maybe give a financial contribution. It's real important. We are a strong voting block, and we need to act like one. So, in, in conclusion, I'd just like to say congratulations to all of you on a challenging year where we didn't blink and we didn't hide. We actually stood up to the challenge and did our organization proud, and it makes me proud. Thank you. Thank you again, Tim. Um, I like your, a copy of the 2020 annual meeting minutes is in the program and available through the QR code on your tables. It's also gonna be scrolling here, so if you can read that, <laughs> I am impressed. Do I have a motion for approval? I have a, a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion to approve the 2020 minutes passes. Polaco CPAs did a full financial audit for GAR and related subsidiary, the Southwest Multiple Listing Service. The opinion that Polaco's rendered was unmodified, uh, and that also means it's the best opinion that can be received. In the program is an overview of our membership numbers and a graph of our consolidated financial picture. You can find a link to the whole audit in the program. I'm happy to report that we have had another strong fiscal year and continue to increase our services and products while maintaining the same membership dues that we've had since 2008. One thing I've learned from my year as president of GAR is that this association never slows down. We become experts, we have become experts and are becoming experts at taking classes online we don't always have to say, you're muted. We are learning to find that mute button a little bit better. We're learning to wear pants, some of us. <laughs> pants are always optional. Um, we're attending committee meeting committees and board meetings on Zoom, participating in fundraising events and community service projects all throughout the COVID pandemic. How many of us were told, unmute? And did you have any idea what it meant when you were told that it would be a hybrid meeting? Who all thought it was like a Toyota, you're getting a Toyota hybrid? I thought, I thought maybe. However, due to the dedication of the GAR staff, trainers, committees, etc., to quickly pivot, we were able to transition seamlessly and get all the business of the association done. It truly does take a village and an association, and it's my pleasure to recognize the, and thank the following people for their dedication to fulfill our goals and mission for 2021. Would the 2021 GAR Board of Directors please stand and be recognized? I would like to say if you've ever served on the Board of Directors for GAR, please stand. At any time. Thank you, you may be seated. I'd also like to add a very special thank you to our outgoing directors, Sherry Fowler, Sherry Fowler, Sarah Lopez, Jack Lynch, and Barbara Madaris. <laughs> With the 2021 GAR committee chairs and those that have served as a volunteer on a GAR committee, please stand and be recognized. Thank you all for your commitment and your service. Each committee has their own unique mission and serving on one is a great way to give back to the realtor family in a very personal and a very rewarding way. If you aren't already involved in one of the many volunteer opportunities, 
You can find out about each committee on the website, gar.com, or ask staff how you can get involved. We have a small, small token of appreciation for each of our GAR committee chairs. When your name is called, please come up and receive your gift and stay until all names are called so we can get a group picture. Hold your applause until all the committee chairs have been called. Laura Abascal and Adrian will distribute the gift bags to my right. The affiliate committee, James Reed. Appraisal committee, Randall Pratt. Bolathon, Jonathan Hamilton. GAR Ambassador Program, GAP, Heather Price. Golf Tournament, Zoe Enright and Gary Boyd. Grievance Committee, Sharon Nolan. Leadership, Education and Achievement Programs, also known as LEAP, Christine Muddy Taylor. Nominating Committee, Sherry Fowler. Professional Standards Committee, Michelle Smith. Realtor Fund Committee, Christine Muddy Taylor. Real Estate Community Political Action Committee, Rec Pack, Damon Maddox. Run for the Zoo, Sherilyn Lucas and Steve Checo. Young Professional Networks, YPN, Anika Nunez. We appreciate your willingness to share your leadership skills, dedication, and diligence to make GAR the thriving organization that it is. Thank you again to each of these committee chairs. in the ombuds or mediation programs. These special folks have the patience and skills to help our buyers, sellers, and each other when there is a dispute going on. If you volunteer for one of these valuable programs, please stand so that we can thank you for providing such an amazing service. This year, we were unable to hold the LDP, Leadership Development Program, but I'm happy to announce that in January of 2022, we'll be starting a live LDP training, and those that complete all five sessions will have their graduation at the GAR Awards Gala on March 4th, 2022, so mark your calendars. If you're interested in applying for LDP, please go to GAR.com and you can get all the information. LDP is a fantastic, fantastic program. Um, check it out on GAR.com. I'd like to now recognize any GAR members who served in 2021 as New Mexico Association of Realtors Directors. Please stand and be recognized. I also want to recognize our GAR members who served at the national level during 2021. Please stand and be recognized. Our final group that I want to thank for their dedication to making us an awesome association are the folks that do a million things behind the scenes and keep everything running smoothly. That is the GAR staff. Each staff member has special talent. Each staff member has special talents and gifts that I hope you all appreciate. GAR staff, please stand and be recognized. Or national level for 40 years. 
If we have any of our emeritus members in attendance today, please stand and be recognized for your amazing lifetime achievement. Any emeritus members, would you please come up and, and let's have a photo taken. That is quite an accomplishment. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for everything that you do for our profession. Thank you again for our emeritus members. That is a huge accomplishment. And I can't stress the value of having a mentor in this business. I'm, I'm lucky to have my mentor here. Her name is Jane Duran. She's somebody that has encouraged me over the years. And, and you need to get a, get a mentor, get somebody that you can trust and that you can count on and that will answer questions and help guide you. So thank you to my mentor. Thank you, Belinda. Earlier you met the New Mexico Association President-elect Hubert Hill. Hubert is also here today to install the 2022 Greater Albuquerque Association of Realtors, Officers and Directors. Hubert? Thank you, Kent. Thank you, Belinda. And thank you for allowing me to preside over GAR's installation. Damon Maddox, our 2022 NMAR president, is out in Nashville with Kathy doing our back training. Um, Damon Hi, I'm Damon Maddox, your so 2020. Hear a video message from Damon. Hi, I'm Damon Maddox, your 2021 interim New Mexico Association of Realtors president. Sadly, as you are aware, we lost Danny William Vigil at the end of October. It was an honor and pleasure to serve under him and his leadership. He will be sorely missed. It is an honor as your incoming 22 New Mexico Association president to be invited here today to install your incoming board of directors. I wish I could be there with you today to bestow this great honor. However, I am also traveling to Nashville to make sure Kathy Colvin doesn't get into any trouble. <laughs> In all seriousness, in 22, I will be serving on an NAR's Realtor Party Member Involvement Committee. This is a national committee, and my role is to be the liaison between our federal political coordinators, known as FPCs, the state association, and the national association. I will work with our FPCs to contact their assigned members of Congress when the national association has a call for action. I will keep our association informed of all real estate related political issues at the national level. I'm available also to any of the board, local boards when they need assistance with RPAC fundraising. My theme for 22 is one state, many voices, share the vision. My goal for New Mexico is to be more member-centric and to increase statewide participation. I want to challenge all of you to join a committee at the state or national level. You can start by attending a meeting or a conference to decide where your passions lie and where your time will be best spent. You can start by attending the January Legislative Conference in Santa Fe. We've proven during the last 18 months of challenges that we are stronger when we move forward together as one group. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate our incoming GAR President, Bridget Gilbert. Congratulations. And congratulations to the incoming GAR and Southwest MLS boards. I look forward to serving alongside you as we move our state forward. And I'm looking forward to working under Damon 
helping him with his 2022 vision, One State, Many Voices Share the Vision. And as you hear the common theme is getting involved. And so once again, that's something we're gonna be really pushing at the state level, is to get more people involved at the local, state, and even at the national level. Uh, we've been able to put New Mexico on the map. And so you heard earlier from Tim McEachin, who was our uh, district, Central District Vice President in Inmar, uh, gave us some updates. And I've got a few more updates from Inmar, what's going on and what we're looking forward to. Um, 2021 was a challenging year due to the COVID, but we found new ways to communicate and get members to participate. Um, our membership at the state level is at 7,500, and it's not been that large since 2008, and I think that's incredible that you know, we've been able to sustain, one of the few businesses is able to sustain through the uh, pandemic. So what we got going on for 2022 is we've set our priorities for the 2022 legislative session. Uh, we had a successful growth and involvement leadership class in 2021. And we're gonna continue this now on an annual basis. We were only providing that every other year. And we're also gonna be providing outlets to the other local associations across the state uh, that don't have the resources to put on their own leadership development programs. Um, as Damon said, we, we've completed a, a three-year uh, budget and strategic plan, and it's all member and local board centric. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more services coming out of Santa Fe. Uh, to the individual members and also to the local associations. Um, as Tim touched, uh, we met the challenges hiring a, a lot of new staff up there. So you're gonna see a lot more communications and, and um, pertinent communications coming out from Inmar. Um, we work closely with uh, Gar and Carnum on the Albuquerque City election and are currently working with them on the upcoming uh, runoff election. Um, one of the great things we did this year was a uh, GAR member, Paul Wilson, was named New Mexico's Realtor of the Year, and he represented us on stage in San Diego a couple weeks ago. So it's very good to talk. We had a 60-day uh, legislative session this year, and we met uh, with successes with some passages of things that Inmar was backing. Uh, we got past the remote online notarization, which will go into effect on January 1st. Um, we also, um, the real estate licensure recover limits and the ability to continue adjustable rate mortgages. We were able to defeat, as you heard earlier from Kathy, the transfer tax, which uh, seems to creep up every other year on us when there's a 60-day legislative session. And it will come back again, so we're going to be out there fighting against that. And this year, we had a terrible tenant landlord bill that almost got passed that would have been devastating to any landlords. If you're working with investors, that would have been devastating to them. And it, we did get it killed. I mean, we thought it was going to hit the floor of the Senate in the last two days, and it didn't make it. But I guarantee you, it will be coming back. So we're going to have to play offense now and not defense. And um, all this accomplishment was made by your investments into RPAC. Um, RPAC works to protect your business and private property rights. Um, RPAC is not a red party or a blue party, it's a realtor party. To quote um, our Realtor of the Year, Paul Wilson, it's making friends before we need them. The backbone of the realtor party are the major investors. The major investors have invested $1,000 or more this year. Would all of the RPAC major investors please stand and be recognized? Thank you for your investment. I encourage each of you to consider investing in the Realtor Party. If you're uh, currently investing in uh, RPAC, I encourage you to increase your investment or become a major investor. GAR has an option for a $25 RPAC contribution investment when you're paying your dues on them. It's now my pleasure and honor to represent to New the New Mexico Association of Realtors to perform the installation of the GAR Board of Directors and Officers. With the 2022 Greater Albuquerque Association of Realtors 
officers and directors, please come on stage as I read your name. Bridget Gilbert, President, ERA Sellers and Buyers Real Estate. Carrie, <laughs> Carrie Trump, President elect Symphony Real Estate. Morgan Kennedy Vincent, Vice President, Ida, Ida Kelly Realtors. Jean Duran, Treasurer, Realty One of New Mexico. Belinda Franco, Past President, Realty One of New Mexico. Your 2022 GAR Directors, Helen Chan, ERA Sellers Buyers Real Estate. Todd Kruger, Rio Grande Realty Investments. Jennifer Cody Martin, New Mexico Real Estate Group. Dennis Mitchell Groves, Coldwell Banker Legacy. Josh Price, Maddox Management. Mary Romero, Realty One of New Mexico. Christopher Shane Tanner, Coldwell Banker Legacy. Alice Tozer, Keller Williams Realty. Chris Venegas, Coldwell Banker Legacy. As officials of the Greater Albuquerque Association of Realtors, you're accepting a leader position that is utmost importance. You will serve as officers and directors of your local board and are considered to be leaders in real estate. You are expected to be knowledgeable about the problems of the industry in the community you serve. Therefore, a great responsibility rests upon you. During the coming year, you will be identified as the official representatives of GAR by the business community and government. In accepting this responsibility, you dedicate yourselves to work for the welfare of your fellow, fellow realtors, your community, your state, and the nation. In the coming year of leadership, you will enjoy many new, lasting friendships and will experience the professional satisfaction that comes only through service cooperation, and unselfish interest on behalf of others. Your rewards will be great, a new secret of living that comes only to those who practice the art of giving. Please raise your right hands. Do you solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that you administrate the oath to which you have been elected to the best of your ability and judgment in conformity with the governing documents of the Greater Albuquerque Association of Realtors that you will observe and enforce the Realtors Code of Ethics, that you will uphold and support the New Mexico Real Estate Commission and its enforcement of license law, that you will and all your acts be governed by the principles of honesty, justice, fair play, in every manner possible, endeavor to promote and safeguard the best interests of your state, the high purpose of the Greater Albuquerque Association of Realtors, and the welfare of its members. If you do so, subscribe, please say, I do. You may lower your hands. By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I do hereby proclaim each of you to be duly installed to the office in which you have been elected. Congratulations. Hey, Laura, let's get one more picture with you.
Bridget, it's my honor to present you with your 2022 President's Pen. Congratulations. Wear it with pride and humility of being the leader of your association. Congratulations to all the incoming GAR officers and directors. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this special event. I hope to see everybody in January at the Edmar Legislative Conference. That's January 26th through the 28th in Santa Fe. Uh, thank you and congratulations. Well, welcome Belinda back to the microphone. Thank you. Have you missed me? <laughs> it's been an incredible year and it's been my privilege to serve as president of GAR and Bridget. Will you join me up here for just a second? Thank you so much for your support as president-elect this year. Please accept this gavel as a symbol of my love and affection. <laughs> as a symbol of the position you are assuming and in recognition of your new role. You have my support and best wishes for a successful 2022. You all are in excellent hands with Bridget Gilbert. I've gotten to know her over the past few years and she's funny. She's wickedly funny. She is smart. She asks hard questions. She doesn't take anything from anybody, and I love that about her. I really have gotten to know her as a friend and a colleague. So thank you, Bridget. so much. Even though much of 2021 was closed due to the pandemic, you weren't phased and maintained your professionalism, focus, and a positive attitude no matter what happened. I mean, if you guys know, Belinda, is there a more positive person on the planet? We all appreciate your leadership, unwavering dedication, and service to this association and the whole real estate profession. Please accept to commemorate your year as president. Going back to the mentorship, I have been surrounded for the last few years by amazing, smart, giving, kind people. Um, I want to give a big thank you to Sherry Fowler as past president that you took my phone calls at 11 o'clock at night. You encouraged me, you made me laugh. Jeanette Raver, you have been an amazing colleague and inspiration and you are a lot of fun to shop with. <laughs> I am constantly um, amazed at how many people that come together for a common good can effectuate good. And I wanna be a force of good. I was told by Natalia Braun that I'm a force of good and I want to continue that, so thank you. And now I'd like to turn the rest of the meeting over to your 2022 GAR President, Bridget Gilbert, and Sherry, this is for you.
one a day, right? Um, first of all, if I could just give a, a huge thank you to my ERA sellers and buyers family. Um, I am so grateful for the opportunity that uh, John and Jill Van Norwick have given me to work with this amazing and wonderful group of people. Thank you so much. Um, looking back on 2020, it kind of feels a little surreal, doesn't it? It's like, did we really quarantine? Did we really shut down the state? Um, and it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the way that we were able to get through all of that. Our 2020 president, Sherry Fowler, um, served our association during those unprecedented times. Tough decisions had to be made in order to best serve the needs of our membership while meeting the new requirements that the state seemed to be constantly coming down with every week. And don't even get me started on the definition of essential personnel. And this year, our, our President Belinda Franco has led us through new challenges. The uncertainties of if and when the state would open up. The new question wasn't red or green, it was red, yellow, green, or turquoise. We dealt with the prevailing attitude of waiting for the other shoe to drop and the fear of what to do if it did. How long would businesses be open before they were shut down again? The task was to ensure that we were doing everything possible to work in a safe manner so that we didn't give anyone any reason to shut us down again. I would like to thank these amazing women for their leadership, for their mentorship, and their friendship. And now what can we expect in 2022? Lord knows I wish I knew. I wish I had a crystal ball. I did have one of those eight balls though, and I did consult the eight ball, and it kept saying, hazy, try again. <laughs> but here are some things that I do know, and some things that I'd like to see in 2022. I know that the members of this association uh, always rise to a challenge. During a time when businesses were closed because of COVID or even going out of business altogether, you found new and safe ways to serve your buyers and sellers. You maintained your businesses while homeschooling your kids, taking care of your extended family, and taking care of their safety and, and ensuring their needs. I believe that our industry helped to propel our economy through some devastating times, and I'm so proud of the way our realtors rose to meet that challenge. In 2022, I was looking forward to see, seeing more in-person training. And I am just tickled to see all the faces out there today. But in May, disaster struck. During a massive rainstorm, the roof over the meeting rooms collapsed. Thankfully, this happened on a holiday, so the building was empty. And thanks to the quick response of Ken Cravens and Nathan Brooks, they were able to, to uh, make sure that the building, uh, to secure the building and prevent any additional damages. In 2022, we'll begin rebuilding this part of the building. Uh, plans are being drawn up now to expand and improve the north end of the building, and this will be a facility that we can all be proud of and I look forward to being able to attend meetings and classes in this beautiful, updated facility. NAR has been developing new courses and training on diversity, inclusion, inclusion, and fair housing, and is providing grants to provide this training to local associations. GAR will be offering additional classes in the coming year, and I would like to include, to encourage everyone to take advantage of the special training and all of the great things that they have planned for you in the, in the area of education. Take advantage of those and, um, and, and those learning opportunities. The one constant during all of this uncertainty for the past two years um, and the chaos that's kind of ensued is you have, you have continued to support the Realtor Fund and to work in the community whenever possible. One of the projects we participated in 
was in honor of our centennial. We're 100 years old, guys. Gar took on a volunteer project at the historic, the historic you say that, <laughs> historic Fairview Cemetery, which relies on volunteers to keep the grounds clean and weed free. The people involved with this nonprofit organization are very passionate about preserving history and showing the proper, proper respect. Thanks to all of you that came out to pick up trash, rake up tumbleweeds, and do much needed cleanup. And thanks to Jen Cody for working to organize our efforts. There's still a lot to be done there, and I would really love to see in 2022 for us to pick that up, finish what we started, and really uh, provide the much needed support that that nonprofit has um, in place for maintaining that cemetery. Uh, we talked earlier about uh, the coming year we would be developing a new strat plan. We'll be looking at what we can do to ensure that our association provides value to our members and looking at the tools and education that you need to promote your success and raise the level of professionalism in our industry. And how can we better serve the communities that we work in? Look for a survey to come out during the first part of the year, and I would really like to encourage you to answer those questions, to give us honest feedback, and let us know what do you need, how can we um, what are some of the tools that you need in, in order to promote your success? In closing, this year I attended the NAR Leadership Conference with Kent Cravens, and we had a lot of opportunities to talk about my upcoming year as president. Kent's ongoing message to me in these conversations was always, how can I help? And it seems like such a simple question but it's so meaningful when you stop to think. And so as your 2022 president, I'd like to simply ask you, how can I help? Thank you. Uh, let's, scripts are great when you can follow, right? Um, I will now turn the meeting over to, no, I have to adjourn. Do I get to use my gavel? <laughs> this meeting is now adjourned.
So it's very hard to see. And we, we really watched this. We really did because if we lost them, what do you do? So every week we would get one of those. And then lock boxes. We had to actually go pick up the keys and show the house and then take it back. Can you imagine not having lock boxes right now? How crazy this market is? Unbelievable. It was, it was a lot of work, but um, I think we've grown from there. Our real estate, our real estate um, world has changed. It's faster. It's more competitive. Southwest MLS works hard to keep up with the new technology. We have a fantastic Southwest MLS director, Richard Gibbons. He's unbelievable. And you know, if you have any problems, he's always there. He'll help you. And he is definitely going to keep our MLS and up to the stuff. And he's going to be, we're going to be the top of the MLS every day. So thank you. A copy of the 2020 annual meeting minutes is in your program available in the QR code. Same as the GARS. So do I have a motion for approval? Thank you. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion to approve the 2020 minutes passes. I would like to ask all the past presidents of Southwest MLS stand and be recognized. leadership and guidance to help us grow into an amazing, thriving organization we have today. I've been very lucky to have served with such a credible group of Southwest MLS volunteers this year. Each volunteer brings their insight, talent, strengths, and continues the vital mission of Southwest MLS. It is my pleasure to recognize and thank the following people for their dedication to the Southwest MLS with the 2021 Southwest Board of Directors, please stand. Thank you. It's been a pleasure serving with each one of you. I would like to add a little um, special thank you for the outgoing directors. Scott Dean, Belinda Franco, and Kate Sutter. It has been mentioned earlier today the importance of volunteering for the association, and I can't agree more. Not only have I served with the Southwest MLS Board, I am also on serving on the GAR um, Grievance Committee for many years. I love the opportunity to serve and learn something new each and every meeting. It's amazing what you can learn in these committees. It's just, it's totally brought my real estate up, up another bar. It's just, just listening to other realtors and getting out there and talking to them and, and helping our community and our, our programs. On the MLS side of things, our committee keeps Southwest MLS on the leading edge of the MLS industry through updates and rules and regs. Constantly reviewing new technologies, products to hit the market, and maintain the fair and equity compliance measures. All of this has ensured that you and the com community are provided with reliable, accurate data that goes way beyond marketing a home. These folks have a big job that is vital to the health of Southwest MLS. If you are on a Southwest MLS committee, chair or committee volunteer, can you please stand and be recognized? We have a small token appreciation for our committee chairs. As I call your name, please make the way to the table at the left. Of, that would be my right. 
<laughs> the stage and remind the um, remain there for group pictures. Sorry. Compliance committee Brian Brian Zoodle. Policy committee Gail Stewart. Nominating committee Scott Dean. Emerging Trends and Technology Committee, Tigo Rebentory. Again, everybody. Will the 2022 Southwest MLS Board of Directors come to the stage when you, as you hear your name called, uh, to be installed by the 2022 GAR President Bridget Gilbert? Right. Officers: Jeanette Raver, President, Realty One of New Mexico, Tigo Venturi, Vice President, Keller Williams Realty, <laughs> Sherry Fowler, Treasurer. Signature Southwest Properties. Kathy Colvin, past president, Vista and Cantata Realtors. Bridget Gilbert, guard president, ERA Sellers and Buyers. And your board of directors, Kay Asbill, 24K Real Estate Group Inc. Natalia Baran, Weikert Realtors Image. Linda Coy, Realty One of New Mexico. Mary Kay Gutierrez, Coldwell Banker Legacy. JoLynn Niffen, ERA Sellers and Buyers Real Estate. Greg Moody, Moody's Appraisal Service. Jim Pitts, Berkshire Hathaway, New Mexico Properties. Ann Vallejos, Keller Williams Realty. And Terry Vasquez Hatcher, Realty One of New Mexico. Therefore, conduct yourselves accordingly. 
In accepting this role, you dedicate yourselves to work for the welfare of your fellow realtors, your community, your state, and your nation. In the coming year of leadership, you will experience personal satisfaction that comes only through service, cooperation, and an unselfish interest on behalf of others. Will you please raise your right hand? You do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that you will administer the office to which you have been elected to the best of your ability and judgment in conformity with the bylaws of the Southwest MLS, that you will observe and enforce the code of ethics of the National Association of Realtors, that you will uphold and support the New Mexico Real Estate Commission in its enforcement of the license law, that you will uphold and support the bylaws, policies, and rules and regulations of Southwest MLS, and that in all your acts be governed by principles of honesty, justice, and fair play, and in every manner possible endeavor to promote and safeguard the best interests of our state, the high purposes of your association, and the welfare of its members. If you so affirm, please say, I will. Congratulations. By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I do hereby proclaim each of you to be duly installed into the office to which you have been elected. Southwest MLS President's Pin, and I look forward to working with her and the Southwest MLS Board in the coming year. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you all. Thank you. Jeanette, um, as a past president of Southwest MLS, I've, uh, several years I've served with you and watched you grow into leadership, and I believe that you are going to make an excellent president, and uh, Kathy Coven has a short message for you. It has been an incredible year, and my privilege Kathy, you're muted. It has been an incredible year and my privilege to serve as president of Southwest MLS. And Jeanette, I thank you for your support as president-elect this year. Please accept this gavel as a symbol of the position you are assuming and in recognition of your new role. You have my support and best wishes for a successful year.
I'm so glad I was able to be here today, and it's my great pleasure to introduce you to your 2022 Southwest MLS president and my friend, Jeanette Raver. Thank you, Herbert. I would also like to thank you for your service, dedication of the Southwest MLS, the New Mexico Association, and the National Association. You have made an impact here, and we were looking forward to the future leadership. But I gotta tell you one thing about her, Hoover. He told me this was a one-year thing. He lied. <laughs> That's the only way. That's the only way he, I could get, he could get me to say yes. But I'm very glad I said yes, so thank you very much. I am so grateful for the support of the 2021 President Kathy Coven this past year. I wish she could have been here but she is giving her time and talent better served realtors throughout the country. Working with Kathy has been an honor. Kathy has taught me so much about MLS and myself. She is a friend, colleague, and she's always there for me. And she likes to stay up late at night, but don't call her early in the morning. <laughs> Not a good thing. And I'm an early girl, so. Um, we will continue working with each other Next year, she will be the um, past president. She is unbelievable for all the work she does for committees for NAR, and she, in her industry, I mean, she's always with the doing stuff with GAR, with the Southwest MLS. She's lo you know, local, state, national. She is a wonderful lady and has a wealth of knowledge. So thank you, Kathy, and I'm so glad that um, I got to serve under her. I think I might have missed ending the meeting, but I get to adjourn, okay. Um, we will be taking a short break and um, come back for our key speaker, and I'll adjourn the meeting. Y'all, if we could be back in our seats at 10.30, get ready for the keynote. Back in our seats by 10.30. You